Good day, gamers. Hey. A formal bust here with our gaming life and... York Corp here joining us. Uh, today, we will be uh, talking about games, but before we get into all of that, our sponsor, as always, H2O, drink it up or you will die. My sponsor and yours. Seriously, if you're not drinking it, get some help. I don't know. I really don't know how you're alive. Cool. <laughs> Corrections before we get into everything? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I had a Fallout-ian slip. I don't know how we can mix the word Freudian and Fallout. Fallout. But <laughs> Fallout-ian. Mama Murphy from Fallout 4 with Grace Holloway, who I refer to as Mama Holloway. You can uh, see where the mix-up is. Holloway, Murphy. Mommy, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Grace Holloway and Bioshock 2 actually called her Mama Murphy. My bad. Mrs. A lot of Mama figures. A lot yes. of Mama figures. Yes. You have something you want to talk about on here? You have something you want to reveal? No. No, no, that's fair. No, okay. No, just that in Fallout and Disappointed um, <laughs> in your current turn of events. We can get into that later. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah. Uh, before we get into the games, too, we have uh, gaming terminology. Last uh, last episode, we were talking about 4X, which Troy is now educated on what a 4X game is. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Uh, do I remember? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would be exploration, expansion, expansion, exploitation, extermination. Okay. Because the games that are 4X yes. that you play, that's all you do in the game. Gotcha. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're learning. We're relearning. We're learning. You're good. It's, it's okay. We got we got a class term this week. In okay. Game terminology. Uh, Ludo narrative dissonance. Ludo narrative dissonance. Ludo <laughs> narrative. <laughs> got it. Yes. It is a conflict between a uh, in a video game between the video game's narrative, what it is trying to sell you as the story, and the uh, narrative told through the gameplay. So in Bioshock, mm -hmm. going back to Bioshock as we were talking about. Bioshock 2, at least, which I'm currently on, you have to rush to the end to save Eleanor. You should not do that. The game will punish you because you've not harvested or saved little mm -hmm. sisters yeah. and given yourself enough Adam to upgrade. So you don't want to rush to the end. Well, it's also like with the with the first one, you're, you're told constantly, you know, okay. you, know you need to do this, you need to do this, yeah. you need to help Atlas with this, and you need to do this, and it's the whole time you're being used to further certain parts and, excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, and like taking away key strategic points mm -hmm. to rip power away from Brian and give it to um, Fontaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will say Bioshock 1 I don't think is as bad with it mm -hmm. because and then they kind of messed with it because spoilers from Bioshock 1 and you haven't played it. Sorry. You, uh, you're you brainwashed pretty much the whole time mm -hmm. uh, and I think they kind of hide that from you but also in Bioshock there is a sense of Oh, you got to do a thing. Well, well, you look around, explore the environment. Otherwise, you won't have as many resources in the end of the game to take on the end of the game. Yeah, you yeah. will not be strong enough at all. Oh yeah, but God, those big sisters. Oh, uh, Bioshock Two big sisters. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, are they still messing with your game? Hmm? Are they still messing? No. You fixed I, it yet? Yeah, you did fix it. Yeah, yeah. Since 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 the computer upgrade has been fine, but yeah, no, it's been it's been smooth sailing. Good. Do you? Uh, I got plenty of games I want to talk about. You want to talk about anything? Um, ones I have coming up or ones I've been, because I have currently playing or previously finished playing. Um, currently playing, I. Hmm, XCOM Two recording it has has been a bit of an issue because even though we did make some graphical changes to it, it's still kind of slow. So I need to get back on fixing that or getting a better graphic setup for that, mm -hmm. but. I finally got um, Kotor, Kotor uh, Nice Old Public to work. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I had I had never been able to do it because it has the um, like the V sync issue was with it, so I had to turn that off. I had to turn off a whole bunch of like the shadows and the grass and stuff because I can't play it at all on my laptop, yeah, which is how I yeah. yeah. It has the, the video issue. God. Yeah. yeah. So now I finally got it to work on my main setup, and um, I'm gonna continue with like what I'm doing with the other old Jedi Knight game that I'm doing where I'm doing the hardest difficulty and I'm trying to do it different than how I usually do to challenge myself more. Because it is probably, I think Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is my favorite game, even yeah. though it's old and clunky and mm -hmm. <laughs> just a mess. Yeah. But I just, I I really, when I first played it, I absolutely hated it because I, I couldn't swing the lightsaber. <laughs> Every time I pressed a key, I was so upset when I was a kid. Yeah. And then like, after years of holding on to it, I actually stole it from Blockbuster, and I never gave it back. 
and I played it again and I was like, oh, I took the time to figure out how to actually play it. And I was like, oh, this is actually fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is actually interesting. And I was like, oh, wait, this is just D&D. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to get back into that again because I do love that game so, so much. Uh, well, light or dark? Light or dark side? well, we got to figure that out as we're going because okay. I, I, I might go to the dark side. Mm -hmm. We, we got to see... We gotta see which way I feel more influenced. Oh my god, no, no. Because it's obvious. It's, oh my god, it's like, it's like you're a Jedi. Did you put any any feats into holding melee weapons? No, no. no? no I, I guess it sucks for you. <laughs> I guess you're just a Jedi with just <laughs> rifles. When, yeah, I was a Jedi with two wheelie pistols. It oh was, no. It was okay, but not how I envisioned playing a Star Wars game. No. Well, that's how I, I started with, um, I had started with, like, putting everything to, like, rifles. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I get, yeah. get a badass sniper no. rifle, get a heavy repeater. No. No. None of that. No. None of that. You can't. It's just, the game isn't as good. It's not going to go well. No. No, you're going to get fucked up by a lot of Sith. Oh, yes. Oh, but, yes. um, KOTOR is one that I'm currently playing. I'm doing the same schedule of, like, more Oblivion. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm doing more... As soon as I get it back onto my computer reinstalled, more Alien Isolation. Yes. Um, and I, I didn't wipe it to try to get rid of the uh, the Alien Cache, I swear. Um, but that and uh, more XCOM 2 coming down. Yeah. But it's just more of my, more of my thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of ones in the future. I'm trying to what play. Can talk about future ones later? Oh, that's right. Like, what's, what's on your mind, game -wise? Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I told you earlier, but I'm going to share with y'all. I tried playing Planet Side 2 again for the first time in a minute, and I played for an hour and didn't get a single kill because I was like, I I had not played in so long. I had no idea what I was doing. Well, what, okay, you can't. I was doing. Can't I, just yeah. Planet Side 2. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a multi warfare. This you is know, true. Air, ground, assault, yeah, there's a lot. You know, there's tanks. Infantry. So, so you were I was I was playing heavy assault trooper. So in the infantry. Yes, in the infantry. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Were you in an outfit and a squad? Or you just I they they or? they dropped me in a squad. Mm -hmm. Did I? And I definitely used squad spawns. Squad spawns. Squad spawns. Squad spawns. Squad spawns yeah. at points. Yeah. But I, I did not try to communicate nor plan with any of them. You, you didn't even hear the voices coming across the headset. Mm. You, were like, you were like voice channels off. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I just turned that off and I was like, I'm just gonna try to get some points here. <laughs> I gotta admit, if you're if you're playing Planet Side Two and you don't want to deal with people and you know what's going on in the game, look at the map every couple minutes. You can get away with that, but you even could. for me, it's hard. It is, it is so difficult. But yeah, no, uh, uh, and I, uh, uh, this is good, because I want to talk about Planet Side 2. You, just, you got some problems, Planet Side 2, uh, originally created by Sony Online Entertainment, now owned by Daybreak Games, and I can confirm, they did break Planet Side 2 for a good year. <laughs> Once they bought the game, they, they had some serious server issues, where they would just... If you got above, I think it was 48 or 90-something people in a hex, oh. the frame rate would drop ridiculously low. Mm. So it was horrible. Now, the game as it currently stands here in 2021, which I have to say, impressive planet side for being an online MMO shooter for that long. Crazy. It works fine. There's still some big issues with it. It's operational. It, it's, it's operational. It doesn't, you know, drop to one or two frames when 48 people enter a hex. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a lot of Zerg, but there are some outfits on there. There's a lot of Zerg. There's a lot of Zerg. There's a lot of Zerg. Well, because they added the last network in, which yeah. when I played, there was no last network, but the last network now kind of funds you where you're going to go. Mm -hmm. But this gets back to you dying so much. Oh, my God. It's, Just, not, it's not a pay-to-win game, Planet Side. I'll give you that. You're not pay-to-win, but you are... Uh, Cert to win, you can get certs by participating in combat. Or yeah, things. defending points or like defending, defending yeah. like capture areas, etc. And every single class, you cert into different stuff. Like if you're a heavy assault, you're gonna want to either cert into bigger guns or more defensive, uh, your armor and stuff. Because there's, yeah. there's like an armor utility slot and an armor uh, suit slot. And there's like some mobility stuff like i think yeah, one of the guys has like a jetpack mm -hmm. i don't know if you can buy one for the other mm -hmm. stuff light no. assault one. although light assault used to only have a jetpack and they're carving their pistol mm -hmm. and then at some point daybreak's like or i can't remember if that was sony at that point but at some point they're like let's give him a six round uh, magazine grenade launcher and that's what the light assault has now oh my god 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the only, only thing, thing Light Assault, assault used to be able to do explosives-wise was, was like, I think they had Claymore's C4 and I think tank mines. Yeah, like, yeah. Like the utility slot explosion. Yeah, because you use them to like, fight, yeah. yeah. But even those, you have to fight with certs. Everything you buy with certs in the game. A grenade launcher? No, 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 no grenade launcher from the start. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like that just sounds. Sorry. The grenade launcher just sounds like a fucking crazy addition. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like why? Like, so, I mean, granted, it's nowhere near as good as most rocket launchers. Mm-hmm. But you're giving light assault. You can fly anywhere. Yeah. Six round grenade to just rain hell on anybody. Yeah. God. Yeah. But yeah, no. So the that explains. Want to get good in the planet side is uh, either well, <laughs> infiltrator works too. To a lesser extent, but you, you want to play one of the support classes that just gets free certs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because the, they'll be yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they'll be um they'll be like engineers or they'll be medics constantly like healing and reviving people anytime there's like a firefight and they're just getting tons and tons and tons of points. Yeah. But it's it you aren't like leveling up individual classes. No. You're leveling up your you, you, you have your battle rank, I believe it's still called, and that is one set battle rank. And now what's really interesting is it's based off the number of certs you've earned. Okay. So it's the number of certs you have to spend. So theoretically and this doesn't make a lot of sense because not all the certs go toward directly toward like making a, a, a class more effective in combat or at what it does. Because some certs are like, uh, like there's like squad leader certs where it's like, oh, you get different colored smokes that you can put down. Oh, oh fun. You can, you, can, you can join the, uh, uh, oh, what is it? I think it's like continent uh, command or whatever they call it. Okay. Where you can request to fit like the faction defender reinforces area, which is nice, but it's 100 certs. Yeah. Why can't I have that? You know, I just, get why they don't want new players to have it, but everyone over level ten can get it. Ah. Yeah. 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 There's, There's not even a high cap on it. Yeah. Seriously. But yeah. yeah. And that's not. And uh, so yeah, you talk about medics and engineers, which you can heal, repair, or replenish ammo for players, which you can get certs for all of that. If you're um, mm-hmm. if you have one of those uh, I forget, what, I think they're called like surrenders, but they're the big um. Sunderers. Sunder. Sorry, surrenders. No, 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 you're good. You're good. You're good. Sorry. No, no, they're sunderers. sunderers. Yeah. If you have a sunderer and people spawn on it, don't they? Don't you get searched for that too? Yes, there is. Yeah. There is there, there, well, there's vehicle spawn, spawn which costs. No, no. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's, there's there's multiple, multiple different, different stuff, stuff, but I mean, to spawn, spawn vehicles, the, the, the stuff that you're spending, you, your entire faction, everyone in your faction gets a certain amount every couple minutes based on the uh, areas you have controlled on the map. Mm-hmm. So you're not really going to run out of those unless you get warp gated, which can still happen. It happened the other evening when I was playing TR. <laughs> um, it's very impressive when it does happen, but it used to happen more often because you didn't have the lattice network. You could go straight to their warp gate, cap the, mm-hmm. the three or four surrounding, and then just have uh, your faction back cap them. Because you would just sit at their warp gate, shoot anything that came, Jesus. and it would only take an outfit or two, which is like, what, eight squads at most? Yeah. And then everyone else in, on your faction would back cap. That's it. Oh, my God. But anyway, so yeah, you can now do vehicle spawning, which is where uh, you can always spawn a vehicle. That could always be a thing. Vehicle spawning is, say you're in a squad, right? You did the squad deploys. Did yeah. you ever deploy inside a vehicle that wasn't a sun? No, I have before, like a while back, yeah. but yes, yeah. it's, I have. It's to- yeah, they used to not have that. <laughs> it used to be you could only spawn on sun. And you would just spawn while the sun is just going no, away? No, you couldn't. Oh my god. You, you, if you wanted to be in a Sundero with your squad teams, the Sundero would either have to stop and deploy, you spawn at it and get out and get in the vehicle, right? Or you'd all have to spawn somewhere to spawn to, you know, at a base. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll get in a Sundero. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, because when you, nowadays, when you spawn in a vehicle, sometimes you spawn and you'll be like, where's the vehicle? And then you'll see the vehicle run through where your camera is, and then your camera will catch up with the vehicle. <laughs> and be like, oh, there it is. Yeah. It oh, happens in brilliant. the galaxies. Oh, God. Which, yeah, galaxy bombs. Oh, man, those are sexy. Oh, God. I have not, I have not tried to redo the, um, or not, I have not tried to do the, uh, mm-hmm. the air combat again, and I'm kind of scared to, because. I, 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 I can say this. I played this game for a while. I only can fly from point A to point B in a, in a flying vehicle. Yes. I can't. I like, would. You want me to do fancy shit? No. You want me to sit in a gun? I got you. There was a I point, there you. was a point in time where I would just spawn at the warp gate, and I didn't want to, like, 
just drop in places. So I would just spawn a fighter and like this kamikaze straight there. Oh yeah. Well, the great thing about those is uh, pretty much all the flying vehicles have a parachute. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So you spend a couple hundred certs and it's like, no matter where I drop from, I'm dropping. I'm dropping where I want to. Yeah. Oh man. I love it all. Oh, that's such a fun game. Yeah. But uh, the other way to get certs passively is through um, uh, sitting on points, of course, but then yeah. you have to constantly move to either either a base of being attacked or a base you have to defend. Yeah. But also, scouts, the cloaky snipery boys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, their passive thing, they have a. Uh, so you know how the mags have like their health regen or their shield regen field, and the heavies have the active shield, and uh, engineer engineers don't really have anything uh, other than here's an ammo box. Yeah. Um, but. Sca- uh, uh, the stealthy boys, uh, what are they? Infiltrator, that's what they call them yes. in the game. Um, they have either a, uh, it's, it's like a, oh, what is it called? It's a dart. You fire a dart and it shoots out, firstly, the range when it's crap, like if it goes past a certain range, it's not going to work. Mm-hmm. But once it lands, it just puts out a pulse that allows the mini map to show up enemy dots, right? Oh, okay, yeah. And so that's a basically spotting, which little, you can yeah. spot, any character in the game can spot, but you have to actually look at the enemy, press Q, and spot them. Interesting. Whereas oh, the okay. infiltrator just kind of pings everyone in the area. And mm. now their other ver- their other version of that is, uh, 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 it's like a, ah, I forget what it's called, but it's a thing you set, you don't shoot a dart out, you set this down, and it, ha- it usually has a smaller area, but you can see the enemy in which way they're facing. Oh, okay. Way, and it's yeah, constant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you do it with the, with the infiltrator. Okay. Because yeah. I haven't played much with the infiltrator at all. No. So that's. Well, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Planet Side at one point was like, everyone can have SMGs. Now, the problem with SMGs is Planet Side doesn't use a mm. recoil. I mean, there's recoil in the game, but recoil doesn't affect your gun firing arcs yeah. when it's a cone of fire game. I mean, all cone of fire means is. The, the video game puts up a, a cone out of the point of your gun and puts a circle at an end point someplace. And says, and says, there. Every time your gun fires, unless you're aiming down the sights to fire a single shot, we're just going to essentially randomly roll a die and see where the bullet hits in that cone. Have fun. <laughs> so you can have ridiculously inaccurate mach- machine guns, but all that matters with them is a rate of fire. Because how quickly can you cover that whole area? Yeah, instead of just... Yeah. As long as you're not going up with the recoil. Yeah, yeah. So. which light machine guns for the longest time was like, oh, that's what you use. Well, no, they aim slower. Their rate of fire is actually slower than the SMGs. <laughs> the SMGs is like, oh, it's 20 rounds. It's gone. All of it. All of it. Real quick. Oops. But yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't like the weapon distribution of the game. It used to be more strict, and the, the actually the only weapon that all classes used to share was the battle rifle. Mm, okay. A single shot, you know, or, or it was it was usually like a twenty round, fifteen round mag. And mm-hmm. Every single class could use that, but it was a single shot, long range kind of thing, which is a great weapon. Yeah. But when you add SMGs in there, yeah, it gets a little dicey. Yeah. Well, it gets yeah. it, it it doesn't. It doesn't pan out well, or doesn't doesn't spread well. No, no. But I mean, the real hard planet side is the when you get it, the the infantry, the tanks, the air, all all the multiple forms of combat and warfare coming together and actually being implemented. Yes. But find me an outfit that does it still, because most of the outfits I've joined in, they're just like I mean, they'll pull vehicles. Yeah. I won't. They they'll pull vehicles, but then. We'll get in the vehicles and drive to the base and all get out, and there'll be a ton of fucking parked free certs for the enemy to blow up. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, it, it would be fun if people yeah. stuck more to trying to do that, but they don't want to. Because, no. I mean, you don't need just, to. I mean, listen, I mean, yeah, you don't need to. The, the, the lattice directs you where to go. You're going to have, at most, I think, four options at times on where you want to go. Yeah. Most times it's one or two, but yeah. So you yep. just keep driving. And oh, there's too many people there? Oh, we'll redeploy to, a, Somewhere to, to else. another part of the lab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. Plant side used to be very much about the outfits trying to work together to get, you know, because there was no lab. So you could be attacked from anywhere. Any yeah, you could go so, through anywhere. Yeah. But there's no Planet Side 3 yet. If they do Planet Side, Planet Swide. Planet Swide. If they do Planet Side 3, I just, I, I, want, I want tanks back to where, to where they were in Planet Side 1. 
<sighs> yeah. Well, I haven't played Planet Side One, yeah. but I would want. I don't know. I'd want also probably to uh, more like aerial combat rewarding because like yeah, it's it, it it's a good to get from point A to point B, but like it'd be fun to have like it to be actual impact of if you had oh, like is. air support. It is. It is. Uh, have you ever been in a? Oh, what are they? Not the main, not the ESF, the Empire Specific Fighter Liberator. Have you ever been in the Liberator? Yes. What what guns were on it? I don't remember. Okay. The Liberator is basically a gunship. Um, it's got three seats: the front seat, the driver, who also has a pretty, pretty decent uh, mach- heavy machine gun with a low ammo, which I think can also get changed out to rockets at some point. Okay. There's a middle seat, which is literally like a belly gunner, and it's it's not like three, uh, 360 each way because you have the belly of the thing, but it's like you can see from like ship. The front of the ship, you can see, like, the nose here, and you can turn back and almost see the tail. Oh, okay, and cool. You have 360 this way. Yeah. So positioning is a little weird because you're not on the flat bottom. Uh, and that gun starts out as the shredder, quad barrel, high fire, like, you know, uh, machine gun, which is very good against enemy aircraft. Okay. But it's a pain to fly and kill enemy aircraft because you're always putting your butt yeah. on the bottom toward them. That's what- so the better thing is, uh, there's the Dalton, and there's a couple guns that replace the Shredder, but all of them are either like armor-piercing or high-explosive, <laughs> and they have a ridiculous range. So you just get the Liberator, you go up to the you know ceiling of the you know game, which is I think around a thousand feet. Oh my God! And you just bomb down uh, uh, explosive, you high-explosive or armor-piercing rounds onto where you know the enemy's at. Oh my God! Which at that point. You have to have someone on the ground telling you where to shoot. Yeah. And the, this is why this is why infiltrators are so were so important. If you put that pin there and it blinks, the liberator pilot and gunner might not be able to see the enemy because they don't render because they're past their render distance. But the mini map will show it. The mini map will ping with the high like oh. like, like the high density enemy or army. And it's just like all right, hit there. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. That's what that's what liberators are for. God, but how often? But how often does that happen? That's the thing. I so mean, I, I want it to be more rewarding. I mean, here's what I'll say. No, I'm not gonna fly a liberator or be in a liberator with you. I'll do infantry and like armored stuff with you. Yeah. But oh no no no. I, any flying is horrible. Oh no no no. I'm I'm a, I'm a terrible pilot when it comes to video games. But, but also liberator. I mean, really, you need three, ideally four people to do that strat, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You at least need a gunner and a pilot, mm-hmm. and a second gunner if you want to be safe, because there is a tail gun on the Liberator that is it's the standard small uh, airborne mount. Yeah, know? get rid of anything trying to come after you. Yeah, um, although it does have like a, a, a anti-air rockets on it that are just dumb fire, but it fires like eight really quick. Oh god, okay. So you can just trail the sky at the enemy <laughs> following you. That, that's my favorite one on it. Um, but, but then, then yeah, yeah, so you need three people in the plant in the liberator at most, and then you need one, maybe two infiltrator on the ground. Yeah, so you at least need like yeah. four or five people. Yeah, I mean you can you can make two free. Yeah. It's just you're not gonna get the factor there. No. But, yeah, no. So Liberator. Yeah. I barely know her. True. True, true, true. true. But we mm. true. But yeah, I think I'd rather see the thing is like I just wanna stick to like infantry. That's fun. We'll get on, I'll show you. I'll show yes. you. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you the way of the Zerg and the Zerg profiteering. Mm. And uh, <laughs> don't worry, you've already been playing the way of the Zerg. You just weren't aware of it. Okay. I, I I'm, ex- I'm excited. I'm excited to learn. I bet you. So, yeah. Uh, plant side two. Oh yeah, that's plant side two. Uh, I wanted to talk about. I've been playing more of this game. I did a first impression a while ago. Mm-hmm. EQI. E- I missed that one. Okay. Here's the premise of the game. Firstly, it's free to play, so check it out. Okay. Uh, it's on Steam, it's free to play. But the premise of the game is like the first couple levels, you're just in a box, right? Okay. You always have a center axis, though, that you can like faintly see. Left mouse button rotates the room one direction around that axis. Right mouse button rotates the room in the opposite direction around that same axis. So it's a puzzle game. Okay. Where you're rotating the entire map around one axis. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's very interesting. Hmm. Um, and, and like, like of course you can like move and run with shift and like jump. Okay. So it's a platformer. 
It's oh, a, it's okay. A, it's a 3D platformer in which your way of figuring out the puzzle is to either move through the puzzle or move through it and rotate the puzzle around you. Move, oh. Oh, that does sound, <laughs> ooh, that sounds really intriguing. Oh, that sounds really funky and really fun. It sounds like a, also sounds like a headache, too. Oh, well, here's the thing. It's, hmm. It started out and, like, from my first impression, this is how it progressed. So about an hour of gameplay went from, all right, we're in the closed box. And, oh, there's, you know, a fire and, like, moving, like, spike thing I shouldn't touch in the box. Okay. But it's a contained box. As it moved on, the box became a hallway. Mm. As that happened, the hallway started to get holes in it to the outside, which is just a skybox, and if I fall into it, I die. Okay. The point at which I ended the, or almost ended, there were two points where I was like, I have to end it here. Mm-hmm. One was where it's, it's like four, it was just three elongated, like, larger boxes. And each time you press, instead of rotating, they, they, they would rotate around, around like this axis to where you could use one to slingshot to the other. Oh! But you could do it three times in a row. And then the end, you had to like land in like this small box. Ooh. Yeah, yeah so, so I probably, probably got, got through that. that. And the, the one that, that did it for me was uh, where, where I was playing on my first impression. I was like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it was just, it was a long hallway, but it was completely open. No, no, no exterior walls. Mm-hmm. So all the walls were either perpendicular or some of them were parallel to the center axis, right? Okay. So, so you, you have, have like L's and like flats like rotating around the center axis, which you can see the whole time. Oh god. And it, it, it wasn't hard, it was just every time you failed, you got sent back to the individual section. Oh, okay, so it doesn't send you all the way back. No, 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 and like, okay. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, like, like, like usually they'll, they'll entail like, like, oh, a save, like, like not a save point, point cause cause like if you quit the game, you'll, you'll lose your progress to the beginning of the chapter, I guess they're on. Okay. But yeah, if you fall off, you'll go back to like, uh, on this one, one was the squares. squares. There were the square, square parts in the hallway where no matter what way it's rotated, you'd be safe because it's a square. Yeah. So. But that is, that's such a cool design, a cool idea for a game yes. to solve puzzles that way. Yes. And, mm. and, and, and it very much reminded me of like, and Portal did this a lot, but there were multiple times in Portals where you're like, oh, now, now you're thinking, thinking of Portals, where you're completely <laughs> thinking about the way in which the game, the, the, the tools the game is giving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exploiting how the game uh, engine works. Yeah, that is fun. You are thinking with portals that way. E Q I. E Q I. Yeah, I do need to play that because it does sound fun. It's free. It's free to play. It's got some good music. Uh, I don't think there's any narration or any dialogue. But yes. <laughs> that does sound. Uh, a bit of an off topic, uh, just because you mentioned up music. <laughs> Not that I was getting any money from uh, my my ch- my channel yet, but uh. My Star Wars game that I was playing, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, uh, got flagged mm-hmm. because uh, mm-hmm. got that Star Wars got that hey, Star Wars music on that. Hey, now that I think about it, Star Wars, is probably bad too. Every episode of Bioshock. Yeah. Because, yeah, because it's it's old bluesy stuff. Oh right, because they use actual music. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah, because because yeah. they they don't they don't they didn't start making their own music for the game until Infinite. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. No, I mean. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're not making any money. Yeah. But, yeah, but no, still, it's yeah. so stupid. What? I don't know if you filled it out yet, but fill out a dispute, and literally, you're fine. Oh. Gameplay, gameplay, everyone. If you're you know a streamer or something like that, or even if you just want to know a little bit more about copyright law, um, as everyone should. Gameplay. Is transformative. It's considered transformative. It's protected under fair use. You can. You don't even have to talk over the video game. If you play a video game and record it with no with none of your audio and the audio of the game, you're completely protected under fair use. Hey, okay. So, go hog wild. <laughs> go well, not hog wild. Uh, I mean, why not? My you no, know, things might happen. <laughs> okay, sure. Sure. Hogging. Would you watch a Hog Wild gameplay? Would you watch a Hog Stream? I don't know. Is the game out yet? Hog Stream? Yeah. Is like the game they're playing is. I, I think I'm pretty sure there's a stream of hogs somewhere. Is it a video? game? Like a live? No, well, I don't know. No, it's probably not a video game. Okay, I mean, well, there's Goat Simulator. There you so go. It's not Hog Simulator. That's the simulator we need. <laughs> we need Hog Simulator 2021. Nice. nice. <laughs> Bring it to me. Nice. But yeah, dispute the claim. Yeah. And it'll most like it. They have like 30 days, and every single one I've done, because like there's been some Fallout uh, New Vegas I did on there that, you know. Yep, those songs, up, yeah. You know, 
Yeah, Nat King Cole still kicking it and suing people. Hey man, he need he needs those monies to make that grave look fresh. I, I guess he does. I guess he does. But yeah, no. Oh, but, uh, uh, cause Bio, I figured Bioshock and Fallout New Vegas would obviously be issues for that. But also, one of the songs on the most recent Dawn of War, uh, uh, Warhammer 40k Dawn of War RTS I played, mm-hmm. got claimed. It was like it was one of the it was like Tank Garage or something. Cause like. All the tracks in, because like that game did have music made. Oh, okay. But it was like music made or that already fit in the Warhammer lore. Yeah. So they had stuff to draw from at that point in time. Okay. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> some more, so somebody made some Warhammer music. Yeah. Okay. But I get, Fair use, though. but yeah, they're gonna come sue you for it. They're gonna say, hey, give me that. No, I'm protected. Fair use, baby. <laughs> give me that money, Jacob. I, 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 didn't make I didn't make any. I don't know what you want. But yeah. Uh, oh. Uh, you got any games you want to talk about still? Um, Anything you were thinking of? I know we had mentioned it last time, mm-hmm. but I haven't got it started yet, and I'm going to, uh, But it's just, which is my Mass Effect playthrough. Oh, I, if we're going to do that, let's say this right now. I want to play through at the same time as you, but we got to... Ch- we gotta ideally pick different genders and yes. different paths. Yes. So which one do you want? I I will play the female. Femship? Yes, I'm gonna be the femship. I'm going to be Commander Commander Shepherd. No Commander matter Commander Shepherd. No, no matter what, what you're Commander Shepherd. Do you do you, you wanna go uh, uh, I think I'm gonna do um what's the one that's half technology, half um Biotics adept, I think it's that. It adept, yeah. I think that's what I'm gonna use because I don't like using biotics, mm-hmm. and I have yet to. I, I I have to have some kind of technology expertise mm-hmm. to get through to get through Mass Effect mm-hmm. One. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, all right. All so right. I'm gonna do that one. All right. Do what you, are you gonna do? Do you know if you're gonna do Paragon or somewhere in the middle or evil? I don't know. All right, let me know. Let me know. Yes, I will. I'm going to do the opposite, whatever. But so I'm going to be male, and if you're doing adept. Yeah. Because mm, do you like biotics in that in the in the Mass Effect game? Well, I uh, see. I played as an adept. This okay. last time, because la- last time I played it, the only time I can remember <laughs> mm-hmm. when I played all the Mass Effects real quick. Well, you know, attempted to play them all um, <laughs> real I like, quick. I was like, let me do adept. I'll get a taste for everything. I think I want to see what they do with soldier. Okay. Because I don't know, like I love, like I loved all of the aspects of like the tech and the bio, uh, bionics. Like it all seemed nice and worked well. But I was like, what is a warrior got in this? Can I tell you? Sure. Um, you can just use all of the weapons. Okay. That's literally it. Is that you are you are you are. So, so you mean the weapons that I love modding and finding mods for and making into amazing weapons? I can just use all of them. You yeah you are you are. Uh, Wait. You have um, like skill trees in all of them to make okay. them to make them better because you are you're capable of using all of them. So question. Yes. Because I'm forgetting how how overheating works in Mass Effect One. If I were to fire a gun in Mass Effect One until it overheated and swapped guns, would it cool down while I was using the other gun? Yeah. So soldiers the best class. Oh, it shoot infinitely. Just constantly switching, <laughs> constantly switching. Okay. However you mod your weapon, you can okay. just, I mean, yeah. Because, it, because as an adept, that was always my issue, was I would either overheat my gun on accident and be like, all right, time to use all of my, you know, abilities right now while yeah. my gun, re, re, you know, cools down. <laughs> but no, as a soldier, you can just go okay. through, from your from your pistol to your shotgun to your assault rifle to your sniper rifle. Okay. You can just let it go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go male <laughs> shepherd soldier. Male soldier. And you will get back to me on if you're going to do... I mean, if you're going to go straight down the middle, don't worry about it. But mm-hmm. Let me know if you, if you start leaning one way or the other. Will I'll, do. I'll reinstall Mass Effect, and we will talk about the greatest space opera video game of all time. Possibly. The most... Uh, becoming Space Jesus. I mean, you don't become Space Jesus in one. That's true, that's true. You become Space Jesus in the literally the intro of two. I love it. <laughs> literally. I love you it. You don't become Space Jesus. You become secret... Cult, yes. Corporation guarded secret space cheese. <laughs> Who is only for humanity? Some humanity extremists yeah. bringing back their their cult leader from the dead oh and being like, he will now 
commit human terrorism across the galaxy. You, you, you gotta give it to, Ma- to Mass Effect and Bioware. They did say, man, how are we gonna follow up a game where all of your choices matter? I know. First five minutes of the second one will kill you. Kill you. <laughs> but you're immediately. Alive. Immediately. Oh, man. Uh, God. Great, great space Jesus. Great space oh, I love Jesus. it. But yeah, that's that's a, that's the that's the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Forward to, yeah. yeah, is yeah. Mass Effect. I gotta say, I'm. I'm not looking forward to it, but I think I think I'm gonna start picking up Stardew Valley again because I need to get a review on it. And yeah. Rage, 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 you're fun, but I'm done with you. Um, yeah, Rage, Rage Two, it's solid. It's just a shooter. Yeah. It's an open world shooter, and that's all it's got, and I appreciate it for that. But yeah, go go talk to people. Something like. Nothing. Yeah, I mean like. I would play something like Fallout or Borderlands. Mm-hmm. I did. Uh, have you played Fallout seventy six at all? No. Okay, good. From what I've heard, I'm just like, this just, it sounds so unappealing to me. There was a free weekend a while back, and I did a first impression on it. Mm-hmm. Because you're always online. Yeah. You're always online. You're always, and the thing is, like, I didn't even get to the point where I was high enough level to where people could kill me. Because, like, you, you, you know, you're not doing PvP or whatever, but, like, you would run into a place and start scavenging, and then there'd be, like, two other people, and you're like, well, can we do anything to help each other? No. Nope. No. Nope. You're just there. You're just both there, both doing the same exact gameplay loop. You want to be friends? You want to talk to them? I mean, sure, if you want to. Yeah. Although, one, one thing, thing I did, the only the only props I can give Fallout 76, and I will play Fallout 76 if Bethesda fixes this. I don't think they will. Probably not. The world is compelling. Like, the level design and the world design, you walk, any time I was playing Fallout 76, I thought, oh, what's right over What's this area? And the thing I love about it is, so, and I think more of should do this, and this mm-hmm. kind of reminds me of the very short time I played uh, a bit of WoW over a summer. <laughs> but the map in Fallout 76, because in like Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, the maps are like, they're, they're just drawn line maps on, a, on your pit boy HUD, right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Fallout 76, like, it's more like a uh, Nuka World map, if that makes sense. In Fallout uh, 4, you know the Nuka World add on, how they had the map of Nuka World uh, posters? Well, essentially, it's like cartoony stuff. Like, oh, okay. Like, oh, there's a big, you know, it's, it's not a drawn map. Yeah. It's a map, and then there's like icons. Little, oh, okay, little icons and features yeah, and stuff. Yeah, okay. but it, none of it's like, like, you don't, you couldn't like zoom in and be like, all right, I'm here and here's a road. Like, you yeah. Can, like, there's roads on the map and you can tell where roads are, but it's much more of an artist interpretation of what the map looks like, which I think for any game that needs exploration, very good way to go. Because that was the best thing about a, a World of Warcraft is you go in, it's like all your maps are blank, you can see some mountain ridges, and then when you discover an area, you got a rough approximation of what the area was like, but you never knew what it was like when you got there. Yeah. Now, and wow, it was always, well, there's more grinding mobs and there's more ingredients to gather, and that's it. <laughs> might, might be a dungeon, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so, no. I'm trying to remember, like, anything about mm-hmm. Star Wars or Republic, if it was like that. Because it was, yeah, it was similar, but it was just, <laughs> or RuneScape gave you exactly where you needed to oh, go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, RuneScape, baby. Beautiful. And you start streaming it. Non-stop. Hey man, gotta get to, gotta get to, I think it's 99. You can get two max on everything, 99. Because you can't get to level 100. <laughs> Menu managing, perfect. But, I th- one thing I've actually thought about playing, but I've never, I haven't really, I guess I knew like one guy who kind of played it, but have you played the Civilization series? Uh, yes. Are I, you a fan? Uh, so, so it's, it's a 4X game, game somewhat. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, there's more diplomacy in that. A lot of 4X games are just, they stick to the 4Xs and there's no diplomacy. Sins of the Solar Empire has a little bit of diplomacy, but Sins of the Solar Empire, if you get to where there's only two factions, the other faction's going to declare war on the player faction. Civilization. I played 3. Okay. I remember playing 3. I remember enjoying 3, and I've gotten it. I used, it used to work on my old PC. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work on my PC. I don't know. I it. It's, it's an old game through Steam. I'm, I'm yeah. sure at some point they're going to do a remastered version. Yeah. Uh, and, and work on it. But we'll see. 
Civ 4 did not play. Civ 5 I played, and I still play occasionally. My issue, my, and, and you, you, you sort of had this issue in uh, Civilization 3, and really in 4, You eventually get so large that you either have to take over the whole world, hmm. because if you're going to have a big enough army to protect yourself against everyone, yeah, everyone's gonna be like, "What do you do with that army?" Yeah, like, what's your, what, what, what's the point over here? Yeah. What, what, what do you, what's the end goal? Yeah, and so you can do diplomacy and stuff, but eventually, either, especially in Civ Five, I've noticed a lot of the AI is a lot more like, "We always want to be at war. We always want to kill everyone." Mm. Which, like, yeah, it's fine, but uh, yeah. and especially, I mean, the thing I want out of civilization that I've never gotten. I want, I want that, that like, like grand worldwide strategy between multiple large factions. The map mm. sizes and Civ three was good at this. It, Civ three felt almost big enough, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Because even if you did a okay. huge map with all like the large map size and you know all of the uh, uh, you know uh, the, the the Earth size, you know, it felt almost right size. And you can stack units. You can't stack units anymore. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Which, That's not fun. Well, it, so, so the, the issue, issue with it, which they could have simply fixed, was every, for every unit you had stacked, stacked they, they had, like, what, at least three health, health right? But, but every time you stack one below it, each of them gets a little bit extra defense from fortification. Okay. Which, which makes, makes sense. sense. If you're in an army of a thousand men, men you're, you're not just going to shoot a rifle and kill one. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to, yeah. You need to. But the issue with that is, the AI or the player could just move around giant stacks of units. Oh. oh. Because if you make armies, yeah. right? Yeah. And armies, you put it, I think it was at least six or so units. But then if you move six or seven armies on top. Yeah. 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 You, it essentially gets to where Civilization Three was very much like, you get to where you get ICBMs and you need them to destroy the enemies. Oh my god. Stacks of troops. If they have that many troops. Yeah. Now, four, uh, I, don't I don't know if, I don't know if four did, did they didn't play it, but five fixes this by you can't stack troops. Mm. Like, there's combat troops and non combat troops. And they can stack them on top of each other, but you can't stack, stack multiple of each on top of anything. But what were you saying about Fallout? Are you just interested? Or oh, no, no. I was, I was just interested because I've always I've heard about. Um, mm -hmm. I think I kind of like the 4X style. It's good. It's fun. It's, it's very it, open-ended, and you can have anything worldwide to be intertwined to it. Yeah, and it's like I've, it's it's something that I haven't played much of in my life, so it's something that's still kind of not fresh, but it's something that's different enough from most of my other games that I play that would it feels unique to me still. Yeah. So I'm not just because I, I I I I rarely ever buy like every single thing of like a series. Like I don't follow a lot of it. Like I think the only one of a series i was like the assassin's creed games i really loved like following that series for a while i stopped after like after the best one black flag yes the absolute most um actually that's not true i gotta take that back i'm sorry no. i'm sorry because i did play um odyssey i didn't but that one lets you be a pirate too yeah it, so we're good we're good we're good we're good we're good, we're good. We're good. We're good. okay everyone knows assassin's creed Perfected the pirate game. It, it did needs to get out of the assassins game. Get completely out of it. Give me more pirates. Give me mainland Taiwan pirates. Give me. Um... You, you, you know how much of a tease they were about it. In the game where you, in their first game where you play as a pirate, you're working for a company developing a pirate only game. Yeah. Yeah. And it's they're like, like they're like we have the best games ever and the pirates are going to be the new. It's like, "Oh, cool. Maybe maybe, we'll get maybe more Square pirate. Enix is kind of branching out finally. Wait, no. Nope. No. 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 Square Enix. It'd be no. amazing. No. They do a pirate game set in nowadays. Oh man. I mean, Smally Pirate. It'd be pretty short. Small. It'd be pretty short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I would say check out Civilization. Yeah. Um I mean, the only Civ, Civ Five, I would say, and I mean Civ Six is out now too. But mm. the big, yeah, the big I thing I really good entry points. The big thing that really kind of, I guess, got my attention on a Civilization at all was I, I did have a friend who played it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Since which I since which I have kind of lost touch with him, mm -hmm. but I remember him mentioning about like the whole Gandhi thing, where like if you, like for it was a meme or a joke, where like if you. 
if you try to, to be as peaceful as possible, there was a glitch in like a really early Civ game where it set Gandhi's oh, yeah. uh, thing to nine, like aggression to 99, and he would just start nuking people, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, or, yeah, originally it was Gandhi, like, it didn't have to do with how peaceful you were being. Oh, okay. It was a, they coded Gandhi wrong because he's supposed to be a peaceful leader. Yeah. So they could him to be a peaceful leader, but I think it, it was either Civ 1 or Civ 2. They accidentally messed up and coded him to be an aggressive leader. But all of his other dialogue and everything was the same, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so you would end up with Gandhi, who would be pretty much chill the whole time. But once he either got a large army or nukes, he'd be like, I'm fucking you up. Let's go. Nuke. And so in the more recent Gandhis, or in the more recent civilizations, there's been like jokes where like, you can, uh, and they actually, uh, I don't think you can entirely replicate the Gandhi uh, nuke thing in Civ 5 and 6, but what you can do is you can just make a, uh, for the whole game, which can be multiple civilizations, of course, you can go from like two civilizations yourself and another to, I think it's like 24 on Civ 5 is the max. Dang. But there's an option that just gives you random, uh, 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 random, uh, uh, what is it, random random civilization like mood or, or, or personality that's like, oh okay so you'll like run into england and they'll be like peaceful hippie dippy shit and like you're running to aztec and they'll be super into science that's like aren't you a war mongering mm -hmm. yeah like what sacrificing? Is, what is this yeah so pretty much all they do is they keep the skin of the of the civilization okay so like the words they use and like you know the inflections and the voice lines are all the same but their actions are completely different but yeah but yeah whether they're an, an economy or culture focus or war focus will be completely flipped around that sounds fun and it'll be the entire game you're playing oh that sounds so great you can have like 12 civilizations and like not know what any of them are going to be like until you meet them be like ah oh, it's america oh you're just super Super into faith. Okay. Like, All right. Yeah. That is that's that, that does sound fun. I think I would try that. You know, uh, I would suggest the thing about civilization with mini games that come out in multiple iterations, like Civ Five, I wouldn't say it was good until they finished all the DLC. Because mm. okay. they, they do, and some game developers do this where they release a game and they know it's going to be patched, but they also know they're going to have DLC, right? And what some of them will do is put the put some of the fixes that are too big for patches into DLC. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, this is good for the final product, but this isn't good during the run of the first couple of years of the game where DLC is slowly coming out. Yeah, and now but, the game has yeah. a bad reputation or like has a ha, or has like a less following. People are like disappointed in it. Yeah, I mean also just DLC fractures the multiplayer. Which Civ, you can do multiplayer. Oh my god. But because the games are so long, or can be, because, I mean, I think there's, like, quick, standard, marathon, and epic. Jesus Christ. And I'm always like, let me do epic. And then it's like, all right, I spent literally an hour tonight doing 20 turns, <laughs> and I've only gotten through, yeah, yeah. No, I like no. the big grand strategy over long term, but that, that's like I said earlier, though. Civ five, it, it doesn't feel big enough for the world that you're ever in. That's fair. And I mean, I even tried with like, because I'm always like, all right, let me just put a lot of people in this map. And I think I've done like 24 people in like 12 city states. And, like every single time, there'll be a few states that are like, all right, we're warmongering and we've captured everyone's cities. It's Great. For yours. And it's like, well, either sit here and get taken over. No, no, no well, I either sit here because normally my economies are running better than them and I can That's field fair. enough troops to defend myself. But yeah, it's either I sit here and wait for them to nuke me or nuke them, or I take a, it's, yeah, yeah. Mm. Whereas Civ, uh, Civ 3, a lot of my memories of that were the scenarios, which I always played because you actually like zoomed in, like on the map, like it was the South, South Pacific, where you literally had like a bit of China, Japan, uh, Aust all of Australia was on there, <laughs> uh, in the bottom corner, and then you have all the South Pacific islands, including Hawaii and the West Coast of America. Okay. But this is on the largest map setting. So you really zoomed in, you have multiple cities on everyone, and it took place during World War II. So it's just this giant freaking naval brawl with, uh, with all of these factions. Because uh, I think there was the Australian Commonwealth, China, Japan, and America. 
Mm. So like four factions, you know, all decently sized out on the map, but there was so much room for everything to take place. All out in the Pacific, yeah. Yeah. That's a, mm. Yeah, but that, that's, that's what I'm saying, the scale. Yeah, the yeah. The scale doesn't seem to be there. And part of this is uh, Civ, uh, Civ 3, which that was in, they had uh, square hexes. Hmm. So the funny thing with square hexes is if you're in one hex, you can move to any of the six adjacent hexes, right? Yeah, whereas what they have now, I think they, they're not pentagons, are they? They're hexagons. Yes, they fixed it with hexagons mm. in Civ 5. Okay. So you can still move to any of the six adjacent ones. It's just, yeah, instead of being a square around a single square. Okay, I see yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, it's like a set of Katana hexagons. Yep. So they okay. all fit together more nicely and everything kind of works better. Mm -hmm. But to me, it also, either the hexagons are too big or the map never gets enough hexagons in it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's a weird imbalance where it's like, ah, this doesn't yeah. feel scaled right. Yeah. And I have to say, uh, Civ 3 was good about like, your maps, it would tell you. Like this many square footage. It would be like 412 by 412. Okay. Like you could see your resolution of yeah. the map. They don't really have it on the hexes. They're the, mm -hmm. On the Civ 5, it's just like there's hexes and it's giant. Hmm. But yeah. Nah. Any, other, anything else? Any questions you got on the Civ? No, no. Just something I need to get, I need to mm -hmm. purchase and get time into. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, pretty much anywhere from 5 forward you can go into. I'd say 6 is a little harder, but. They added some stuff, and yeah, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. T t civilization, they always change stuff up. We'll see if it's good, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I like to see, you know, them changing stuff. That's good. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't want, yeah. But, yeah, it, it's, it's always, they change stuff, but there's some stuff they kept that I don't know why they kept, and there's some stuff they changed that I don't know why they changed. But. For some reason, it's always kind of been in my head that civilization was kind of like, um, not the Sims, but like, this is sound funny. Yeah. Uh, Zoo Tycoon. I mean, they're, they're strategy games. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, this is good. Gonna... So, the original Civilization, or I don't know if it was in the original Civilization, but there was a person for a while who was running a blog called The Endless War. And he was either playing in Civ 1 or Civ 2, which at the time, you know, were 2D, right? Like, Civ 3 was 2D, but it had 3D drawings on the, you know, yeah, uh, like it had 3D graphics coming up off the ground, but it was still a 2D map. Yeah. This is all 2D. <laughs> well, it, was, it was Civ 1, and I think Civ 2 was 2D with a fake 3D drawing, you know, like old design and shit. Yeah. But this person in this in this war thing literally was just like, built, like, play the game as you're supposed to, where you expand, and like, it ended up with him in like a three, three way tie with like two other factions for like at the end of the game. <laughs> he's like, what happens every 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 turn? I move some of their cities, they move some of mine. Nothing happens because our cities are so strong. Yeah. <laughs> we lose troops. We send troops forward. Some, sometimes someone's culture will take over. Yeah. Oh my god! Just a constant back and forth. Yeah. yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But, but I think it was like the turn. He was like on like year four thousand or six thousand. It was like, oh god. Oh it never ends. No, it never ends. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, yeah. Civilization, but constantly destroying itself. And that's, and that's why there's victory types. Because, because they want the game to end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Most, Most forex games, in my opinion, always have an issue on when they end. end. You know? Because you either end and I'm like, oh, I want to still, you know, because the forex formula is you explore... You uh, uh, expand your, you know, holdings. You exploit your holdings, and then you exterminate. There never seems to be a switch up. Like you never go from exploring to extermination back to exploring back. It, yeah, yeah. It seems to be a very linear progression. Yeah. Whereas it's really a world, but to me it always feels like okay, but what I'm doing is linear. Yeah, like you have the options to go all kinds of places, but you what are. What I have you, to do when I go to all those yeah. places. Is you're put on a track, yeah. regardless. Yeah. That's frustrating. Yeah. But I understand. Yeah. No, I understand. That's what I'm saying. I like that they have the victory. Uh, yes. Because otherwise, yeah. because you just you never. Yeah, if you think the game's too short, civilization has the option, like, well, do epic and do a victory type you want to do. Yeah. No, yeah. 
Civilization, Civilization Saladin. Saladin. Yep. Yep. Okay. At, At least, least if we can survive. That's one thing I can tell you about. That's fair. You got anything else you want to talk about? I have one more thing I want to throw there and talk about. No. Okay. Uh, bring it up. What is it? Uh, what you got? That would be... Aegis Defenders. Aegis Defenders? Yes. Uh, I did it, I did I did it for the first of it, and I need to pick up more of it, but I need to get a controller for it, because <laughs> it's, it's a, a side-scrolling side strategy tower defense, defense game. Side-scrolling strategy tower defense game. Yeah, yeah. With, with a little, little bit of exploration. Okay. So, so what, what you basically, basically do is the game, game starts, starts out it's post apocalyptic. Okay. You are. Uh, I, 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 it's it's implied, implied like either a granddad and, and like granddaughter kind of thing, and, and you're both scavengers for scrap metal, or you know, scrap parts or old machines and stuff. So like that's the whole game is you're exploring ruins, and when you find the ruins, well, you found it, but now you have to defend it from. Evil, mm. evil beasts or whatever. Yeah, whatever's out in the wastelands. Yeah, they're like mechan- like some of them are beast beasts, and then there's also like mechanical beasts and stuff. So it's like, oh well, where's they're coming from? You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you're moving across like the map, which is kind of a a classic um, line map like in Mario, but not yeah. done in that style. <laughs> but yeah, so you're moving from uh, east to west, slowly going like across. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, they're all just multiple different missions where you explore some ruins, find collectibles in them, which is fine. Not To me, that's not where the game shines, but it just gives you downtime between battles. Mm-hmm. And then the battles are like, you found, you know, this old arc reactor bullshit thing. We don't, they don't, they don't really like explain it yet. Mm-hmm. So far, like I said, I'm only an hour into the game. But then the tower defense part is, all right, you have like 30 seconds or whatever. Fight's going to be here in a second. And you don't always know which direction all the enemies are going to come from. Oh. But uh, both your characters are, like, different. Like, they can build different stuff. Like, one's, like, a hunter with a gun. One's, like, a builder with a hammer, right? Okay. So, like, hammer guy can build, like, turrets and, like, mines. Or, no, not mines. He can build, like, turrets and better turrets and pretty much turret-based stuff, you know, defensive mm-hmm. stuff. And then the hunter lady with the gun, she can do, uh, what is it? She can, like, make a bomb. Oh. And then make traps that, yeah. And so... It's all very like, like every time you have to defend, it's very like pick and oh, yeah, go, pick and choose, pick go, it. But you have, go. but you gotta be ready for them. Yeah. But you can also swap back and forth at any time. Oh, okay, nice. that's nice. Um, but yeah, no, it's just on PC on keyboard, it's a little too clunky. But I, I, I am liking, I'm liking the mix of it being because it is story driven. Like there's plenty of story that there because like there's cutscenes in between. I think I've seen. I think I've seen something. For, sorry, go ahead. My, like I said, I did first impression. It's it's an old. It's not an old game. But mm-hmm. It's not. It didn't come out this year. I don't think. It's um, fine. But no, it's it's a good game so far. It's just what I love is the voice acting. Mm-hmm. It'll be like text blob, and the voice actor will be like, "Huh." <laughs> it's it's the one word voice acting. It's the, yeah, you know? yeah. It's like, huh. It's like it's like oh, you surprised me. Like the words would be, "You surprised me." Oh, oh. Yeah, like, like the, huh? Yeah, yeah, like, oh, it's Monday. Mm. Like that's <laughs> I love it. Like, it's just single words uh, for these whole blurbs. They got one dude in a microphone in the back just yeah. <laughs> making noises. Yeah. Oh, it's great. No, yeah, uh, so that I'm definitely going to check out more if just for myself. But yeah, no, I, I really, huh. the, mix, the mix is just perfect for me, it seems, because it's, I mean, it's pixel graphics, which, man, but it's... I mean, hey, man, there's, I mean, there's yeah. some great games that can come from oh, pixel yeah. graphics. I, I just... Look at I'm, Minecraft. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I just have a problem with, with Steam being like, what genre is this? Pixel graphics. It's not a genre. It's not a genre. Not a genre. I saw art style, Ugh. but that's not, that's not, that's, no. Mm. No, like, are you going to put Super Meat Boy next to fucking, like, Binding of Isaac? That's not the same. I mean, yeah, I think Steam would do that. I mean, they would. They probably yes. did. Yes. I mean, that's probably one of their top selling games. They, 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 they put the tag difficult. And Dark Souls, and it's like I mean, this game is difficult. It's Dark Souls. You ever played Super Mario Sunshine? It's just like Dark Souls. Uh, Do you ever play um, Need for Speed Underground Racing? Yes. It's just like Dark Souls. No. The gameplay is no, almost identical. Now I will agree, Dance Dance Revolution, just like, like Dark Souls. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming and seeing the light. You just gotta roll and get those iframes. That's all Dance Dance Revolution's about, right? Just no, no. You gotta get, you gotta get a, you gotta roll onto the mat with the controller. God, man, I remember. Oh, that was. 
I remember owning Dance Dance Revolution and like the controller mat that, oh, it was so, you couldn't get it to register anything. You would stomp on a part. I know, I know, it was so bad. Oh, but when I was a kid playing it, I was like, this is so cool. Look, I pressed the thing with my feet and it, I play the game. And that's why you had to be a great dancer today, because whenever you dance, you just move your feet in any of six directions, right? Yes. That's all dancing. Though. Like an asterisk. I only move in that direction. <laughs> an asterisk. Yeah, you know, like if I'm the senator, like forward, <laughs> that's it. It's like a, like a, like a chess piece. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. That's better. So yeah, so you're looking forward to more KOTOR, you said. And Mass Effect. And Mass Effect. Yes, those two. Game chef, game chef. Yes, I need to yes. play some biotics because I'm not ready for that. I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking forward to Mass Effect again, mm -hmm. I'll say. I haven't played the soldiers, so we'll see how it goes. And Do definitely looking forward to Plant Side 2 at some point. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I can just teach you how to surf farm the Zerg, baby. Yes, I need also need to join, um, I need to level up my guy and become a, uh, join like an outfit or something. I got an outfit for you, don't worry. Yes! Don't worry, don't yes. worry. All right. But, uh... You got anything else? The only thing I wanted to do is I wanted to say you can find me at uh, York Corp on YouTube. Also on uh, Beck is the Void. That's another podcast kind of art experiment thing that I'm doing with my friend uh, Justin. And, uh, yeah, the Beck is the Void and York Corp. That's where you can find me on YouTube. Check me out there. Yeah, check, check him out. He's got videos on the internet. Yes. That's what they are. Watch them. They don't, yeah, that's where they are. It's me. I've been a formal bust as always. Our sponsor, H2R, everybody. Yes. Stay hydrated, drink it up. <sighs> Thank you, gamers. We'll see you next time. E.